Eric Mwade with yet another mentorship video. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at some of the questions you had asked me by email. And so we begin by the first part of the question, which is how do you pyramid into a position? What if you invest half your total funds as the stock breaks through resistance or raises off uniformity support line? Then what? It may form uniformity or continue higher. Also, you ask where do you place your mental stops? So really, I think what you're asking here is irrespective of whatever system you are using, what do you do once you get a buy signal on a stock? So let's say you decide that the stock is giving you a buy signal, either through technical analysis or fundamental analysis, doesn't matter. What do you do in terms of getting into the position? Now, I have my own view on doing this and, you know, everybody can do it whichever way makes them comf confident and comfortable. I just think that if you buy, you know, let's say if you put all your position, let's say you wanted to invest um, 10,000 or a thousand or a hundred thousand, doesn't matter, right? I mean, it just depends on your account size. That's not the point. The point is, let's say you want to invest 100% of this amount what do you do in terms of getting into a position? I think what you do is irrespective of how much you've decided to invest in a position, let's say X. How you arrive at X is not as important, but you've decided you want to invest X amount of dollars into a position. I think if you go ahead and buy the entire amount at one go, so you just go and place a whole trade, 100% purchase of that position, at Y price, you know, I think that's a show of arrogance. And I don't want to put it that way because it sounds negative, but I think you're, what you're saying is I am confident. I am buying it at the best possible price and from here, I'm just going to get a move to the upside in my position. I think that also leads to a lot of timing issues now unless you can use minute to minute timing and hour to hour timing to kind of narrow down on your entry position it's not the easiest thing if you consider that stocks during the day have this volatility it's not the easiest thing for you to just get this low so here's my suggestion once you decide that you want to invest X amount of dollars into a position, so X amount of dollars or X amount of money into a position, the thing what I would do is take that position and divide it by three. So divide by three. And you can buy that stock or options or whatever. You can, first, you can buy the first batch of a third of your intended eventual position and so you buy it at whatever price and again I would suggest not to do it at market orders because if you place market orders they're just gonna rob you I would buy the stock at a specific price so you don't get um, a bad feel so you go ahead and make that purchase I would wait three hours at least three hours more so three more hours after that purchase to buy the, the next third position. So you go buy another third. And then I would wait at least another three hours plus to buy my next and final purchase. Now you notice that in the US market, US markets are open for six and a half hours. So that means that if you you're buying over a period of nine trading hours. So we're not talking about just regular hours. We're talking about nine live market trading hours. You see that your nine hours is going to take you into the next day. So I think that's a better way of doing it because what happens is because of the volatility of a stock and they have to be volatile just because opinions change during the day, during the course of the week, course of the month, you have a better chance of being filled somewhere in the middle especially if you are buying it 
waiting for slight pullbacks to see whether you can get a good fill of that position. So I would say average into a position by placing a third of your trades over a period of at least three hours plus. A couple of things happen when you do that. Number one, it buys you patience. So you're not going to be you know, moving into a stock with a lot of anxiety that you have to be in the stock right now just now take the app and not you know you your timing has to be perfect if you push yourself to place the entire purchase at once number two you get a chance for a better feel okay and it also forces you to realize that you are not the authority the authority is the market so by respecting the market that's why you use that strategy so it helps your psyche and number three if the position pulls back after your initial purchase, it's a good thing because you are adding on to your position. And after you get finally filled over a period of, let's say, as I, my suggestion is, this forces you to be patient. Nine trading hours, you fill your position. So a third, three times. So finally you get filled, right? And that's exactly what you want. So. Let's assume that you go into the, into the trade and place a third of your initial position. So you place a third of your initial position at X price. X price, oh, let's call it at Y price. That's what I was using, at Y price. And let's assume that you are just a genius. Your timing is perfect. Market agrees and the stock takes off. Well, what's wrong with that? You don't have to chase. You already invested. That's my point. If it ticks down slightly, you can add on to your second purchase of a third. Now you can change this slightly and say, you know what? I'm going to buy it in half. So I'm going to buy one half now and buy the next half, let's say, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours later or the next day. So you can do it this way. Um, you can do it. You can do whatever you want at the end of the day. You can even say, you know what? I'm not feeling my timing to be correct here. I'm going to buy in a, in a fourth position and buy it four times over a series of hours. I would say you want to go into the next day just to average out. And uh, if, let's say, three fourths of the position starts moving and the stock is really moving well, you don't have to add the last final bit, the last fourth. So when you're buying, my opinion is if you go in and buy at once, think about it. What you're saying is I am absolutely dead center correct with my purchase. And it's not unusual and you know, we all know this. You buy something, you're desperate to buy it. You just think that right now I got to buy it right here. And then after you buy it, it moves up and then it starts trickling lower. And now you're thinking, oh my gosh, what did I do? So I think if you go into purchasing your positions in, in, in uh, chunks or in, you know, in portions, you have a tendency or you'll have at least the opportunity of averaging out your position. Keep in mind, stocks are going to be doing up and down over a period of hours, period of minutes, period of days. So what's the rush? And if you buy part of your position and the stock moves up, well, there you go. You are you at least invested and the position is going in your direction. So you don't really lose much. When it comes to the mental stops part of it is I would also do it this way. So once you are in a position, and this is just my idea. You might agree with it, you might not, but this is just my idea. So once you are in a position, you are fully invested in a position and you, your stops can also be at 3% at five percent either stops can be mental or hard stops so either way works the thing about this is you have to be careful about hard stops hard stops just means that you place your stop and the market can see your stop because the market just comes and takes your order and moves on i mean you have to understand that your broker is in the business of uh, selling and buying shares for you then the business of commission so if you show them that you're ready to trade at a certain price they'll come and take that 
and take their commission. They don't care. So I would say if you have the ability of watching the market during the day, then place a mental stop. Now, there's a downside to placing a mental stop. It needs a lot of discipline to actually execute the stop. Let's be honest. We have good intentions of placing our stops. But when it comes to pulling the trigger, uh, the mind will pr play tricks and be like, you know what, I'm going to give it another couple percentage points before I get out. And you keep lowering your mental stop until finally you're so deep in the hole, it's very hard now to act. So I say the problem with mental stops is that you have to be disciplined. And quite frankly, and I'll be honest, all of us struggle with this mental stops thing. So maybe just give the market your, show the market your hand and ha place a hard stop to protect yourself. I mean, at least you're protecting yourself. So the problem with mental stops is just the fact that when it comes to pulling the trigger to get out, um, there will be lots of reasons why you will not do it. And that's one of our failures as a, as a you know, in response to the market stimuli. We, we tend to not place those mental stops or execute them. But what I'm saying here is once you've decided and once you're in a position, the next thing is, where is my stop? I say you can also do it three ways. You can place a third of the position to be stopped out at 3%, all right? And you can also say the next third to be stopped out at 5%, and the final piece to be stopped out at 8%. That's one view. Now, I know most people will say, but I will be increasing my commission. That's true. So you can you can do it this way or you can do it in terms of half, you know. But really the worst you want to take is an 8% um, loss. And the reason why the, that's the biggest loss you want to take is mathematics because, you know, when you are down 50% as an example, I believe you have to gain, the stock has to gain 100% for you to k get back even. Now that's demanding a lot from the stock. And I believe if you are down 25%, it's something like 30, well, I don't remember the numbers, but it's a it's significant amount for you to gain back. You're demanding a stock to really move a lot for you to be back even after it's been down this much. So you're demanding a lot of um, price gain here. So, at about 8% down, and if I remember correctly, this is where the numbers, the mathematics, and I'll have a link on the description explaining this uh, mathematical principle, or at least mathematical fact, as to why you should be careful with dropping too much of a loss. Um, at 8%, I if I remember correctly, it's about 9%. You need to gain 9%, something in that range, for you to be back even. Now, once you drop to 10%, the numbers start getting huge. I think 10% is, um, uh, and I have the video link in the description, sh showing you that the more you go down in terms of percentage loss, the harder it is for the stock to gain back to even. It's just a mathematical fact, so you have to be very careful, okay? So that's why I would say 8% is the max. And how you place that in terms of a hard stop or a mental stop is um, an individual thing. But you got to be careful with those mental stops because they're not easy to execute. All right, so that's how I would look at it. Or you can say you're going to place... Remember, there's no hard science again. Um, there's no must do strategy here you can adjust them from one position to another you can place your stops in halves you know um, if you want to do that or you can even just decide to place a block trade as a stop at let's say five percent that works and as long as you're using stops you're doing fine now that's the key as long as you have some stop strategy and protection then you're doing fine how you execute that you can change it from day to day stock to stock position to position but i think that's the maximum you want to take 
especially if you're trading stocks. If you're trading options, options do move a lot. So I, um, I wouldn't know how to best approach the stops on options, but on stocks and ETFs, that's the number you want to take as a maximum loss. And, um, and that should keep you in the game long enough. Even if you have a series of losses, then you can at least have your capital not being you know, eroding very fast. But the other thing also I have to say is there's a principle here like that, that if you get stopped out of your positions three times in a row, so three times in a row you get stopped out, um, I think the best thing to do is to take a break from from the market so if you get stopped out three consecutive trades um, I think you have to or I suggest you get out of the market for at least three days don't trade maybe longer because it shows that you're out of sync with the market and sometimes you just need to get out of the market to, to clear your mind and actually adjust your thinking if you keep trading and keep trading and keep trading and you take those losses and they keep mounting, it affects your psyche. It affects, it makes you a little bit more desperate to get back what you've lost and your thinking is not straight. So I'm just suggesting that if you get three back to back to back losses and you get stopped out, something is not right with the way you are viewing the market and maybe you need a break. And I would say take three days off, you know, just, um, settle your mind before you get back into the mix okay hope that covers that question let's go to the next one and the next question is on the non-uniformity video you used EMA 8 13 and 34 on some charts and others you used 50 and 200 when do you use either or does it matter yes it does matter and I'll show you what the confusion is actually it's very easy on the the ones I was using and you can you can either on this here on this so the 8 13 and 34 EMAs that's very easy to explain EMA exponential moving average these are for weekly charts so on the weekly charts this is my setting and you don't have to use this I'm just I'm just explaining to you that that's what I use and why do I use these numbers I use these numbers because they are Fibonacci numbers so if you go back this is a five three two on and on zero and one and then here 34 and then I believe it's 55 and then 89 and then 89 this is a Fibonacci number so I just use the three there on my weekly charts okay on the 50 and 200 that's very simple that's the daily on the daily everybody uses those so I just use them just because um, it's 50 and 200 day moving average simple or you can use exponential either way so you can also use on the dailies you can use simple or exponential on the daily now I do have a theory it's just my theory that this 50 that people everybody uses 50 SMA um, or I think that it should actually be 55 which is a Fibonacci number that's just my thinking and I believe even though we use 200 I think the number should be 233 on the daily or 144 now all these are Fibonacci numbers but I digress uh, because everybody does use the 50 and the 200 days so we'll keep those on our chart so that's why I use those numbers weeklies and dailies I hope that explains it and stock charts does allow you to have those as options you can hear see here on the Nasdaq weekly currently that Let's go here. The moving averages again 8, 13, and 34. And those that's why I use those. Um, you can use whatever works for you, but I use those and those that's my reasoning. And on the daily, let's see what we can get. The daily here. We can see that.
use the um, 200 day and the 50 and I also have my 144 day moving average because it's a Fibonacci number so I just keep it there just to explain visually what's going on while I'm here I'm gonna discuss about the market for a second here we have we had this movement of the highs which was this now my understanding of how the market works is it gives you a warning signal I think this was a warning signal of what was gonna come in the coming months so we've come and made new highs but while we are making new highs guess where we are stalling right there so I think somewhere around here and I, you know this is my position that this market seems to be especially and especially if we roll over like that that's gonna be a double top and this warning sign that everybody forgot about is gonna ring very loudly because down the road more than likely we are gonna be trending lower that's my thinking unless we see a breakout above the blue line here if we don't see that breakout I would expect markets to be going lower but anyway so those are the moving averages and that's why I use them so let's go to the your final part of your question and the final part of your question is any stocks on your watch list should there be non-uniformity uh, I know what you're referring to in terms of whether I have any stocks that are giving us non-uniformity in other words where we're expecting uniformity maybe the stock is not doing that and it's actually moving higher by breaking out above a predetermined line um, the best thing I can say is whenever I come across some type these types of action it's just during the day when I'm looking at the hundreds of stock I go through so I don't have a way of finding uniformity per se um, that is just by observation of what stocks are doing as I go through um, looking at stocks manually but on the last part of your question where do you find your individual stocks to watch this is very simple what I'll do is I'll send you um, some video links that have and do explain how I narrow down on my stock list every day so I go through a manual process of finding stocks the reason why I go through a manual process for my for me and for my own um, understanding of what the market is trying to do I find that if I do it manually I have a good sense of how the market is working internally so there are subtle things that the market can do um, that sometimes when you use an automatic scan you just miss so yes you can use automatic scans if you have them and most platforms will have those so you can just take their best ideas and play with them because you can't own all the stocks in the world just you need a handful of ideas at any given time um, so you can use any automatic scan or you can go through a manual process I'll send you video links that explain how I do it through my manual process and I do it every day so I can get a sense of what the market is doing always have a watch list that is always being um, edited deleted some stocks added some brought back so it's just continuously walking the list trimming it adding trimming adding and all that but doing it manually every day little by little you get a sense of what the market is doing internally and maybe the big picture can speak to you Eric Moade good luck uh, let me know if you have any further questions otherwise peace and blessings Woo! Mwah.